Welcome back to the class on electrical machines. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about some of the numericals in electrical machines. Now, let me take care of the first numerical. A 440 volt 50 head sport for 1400 three phase induction motor. Calculate the synchronous speed, rotor frequency at a standstill and running condition. The rail to speed between the rotor flux with respect to the rotor structure and the respect to the status structure. Last one is the rail to speed between the status flux and the rotor. We know the expression for the synchronous speed in induction motor that is ns equal to 1.2 s by p. The frequency is given 50 hertz, the number of poles in the problem is given 4. You substitute all the values you are getting the 1500 rp. The actual speed of a motor is given that is a 1440 rp. Now the slip of the induction motor s equal to ns minus n by ns into 100. So 1500 minus 1440 by 1500 into 100, you are getting the 4 percentage. Rotor frequency at the standstill that is denoted by F2, that is equal to the supply frequency, that is 50 hertz. When the rotor is running with a speed of 1440, the frequency of voltage in a rotor, that is denoted by FR, that is equal to S into F2. The slip of the induction motor already we calculated, that is 4 percentage, that is 0 0.04 into 50, we are getting the 2 hertz. Now we are going to find out the, the rotor flux with respect to the rotor structure, that is equal to 120 FR by P. See here, FR is nothing but a, the frequency of voltage in a rotor divided by the number of poles, you substitute all the values you are getting the 60 rpm. 60 rpm is nothing but whatever the flux is creating from the rotor that will be running with respect to the rotor structure. That is, the rotor is already running with some speed. So, with respect to the rotor structure, the 60 rpm. The relative speed between the rotor flux and with respect to the status change. The speed of a rotor flux with respect to the status structure equal to speed of a rotor with respect to the status structure plus speed of a rotor flux with respect to the rotor structure. So this value becomes a 14 party. Already we calculated the speed of a rotor flux with respect to the rotor structure that is 60 rpm. We are getting the 1500 rpm. Now what are the fluxes coming from the stator binding? It is also running at a 1500 rpm that is the synchronous speed. The rotor flux also will be running a, with respect to the status structure is a 1500 rpm. So, the rail to speed between the stator and the rotor flux becomes a zero. Now, come to the second numerical. The 440 50 head 50 3 phase induction motor draws the input power of 76 kilowatts from the main. The rotor EMF makes a 120 complete cycles per minute. The stator losses are 1 kilowatt. The rotor current per phase is 62. Calculate the rotor cap loss per phase. Next, rotor resistance per phase. A top dollar per name. Next Frequency of the supply is given that you have to take is F equal to 50 hertz that is given in the problem. The rotor frequency 120 cycles per minute. That's the number of cycles per second is nothing but a rotor frequency. So 120 by 60 we are getting a 2 hertz. Now the slip of the induction motor equal to FR equal to S into FS. So slip of the induction motor equal to FR by FS. We are getting a 0 0.0. Per phase rotor current is given 62 ampere. So, motor draws input power of 76 kilowatt from the main. The stator losses are given 1 kilowatt. So, the stator output power equal to 76 minus 1, we are getting the 75 kilowatt. So now, we have to calculate the rotor coupler. We know the rotor input. So, rotor coupler is equal to slip into stator output or rotor input. That we are getting the 0 0.04 into 75,000 watt. We are getting the 3000 watts. This is the three phase rotor coupler. Per phase power means this value divided by the 3, you are getting the 1000 kilowatt. Now, if you want to find out the resistance, then the resistance per phase equal to this value divided by the square of the per phase current. This value also given in the problem. So, we are getting the 0 0.264. Synchronous speed. Actually, in the problem, it is given that the number of poles is given as a 6 pole. So, the synchronous speed is ns equal to 120 f by p, 120 into 50 by 6, we are getting the 1000 rpm. So, the rotor speed is equal to nr equal to ns into 1 minus s. So, 1000 into 1 minus 0 0.04, that is equal to 960 rpm. The rotor output power equal to rotor input power minus rotor copper loss. So, already we calculated the rotor copper loss, that is the 3 kilowatt. This is the three phase rotor input power minus three, we are getting the 72 kilowatt. This is the total power, nothing but three phase power. So the torque developed in an induction motor equal to 
rotor output power divided by the angular velocity of a rotor that is 2 pi nr by 60 already we know the speed of a rotor of induction motor that is 960 rpm substitute all the values finally you are getting the 716.2 newton meter a three phase six fold 50 hertz induction motor develops a 3900 watts at 950 rpm what is the stator input the stator losses is 300 watts the synchronous speed of a motor ns equal to 120 rpm F is given 50 head, P is given a 6 volt, so we are getting the 1000 RPM. The motor speed is running at a 950 RPM, so Zippo's induction motor at this speed, NS minus N by NS, we are getting the 1000 minus 950 by 1000, we are getting the 0.05. The mechanical power developed PM is given as a 3700 watt. So we know the Zippo's induction motor. Once we know the Zippo's induction motor, the power input of the rotor equal to the mechanical power developed equal to 1 minus s into rotor input power. So from this expression, if you find the rotor input power that is equal to mechanical power developed by 1 minus s. So here we are getting the 3700 by 1 minus 0. Point, see here you have to take 0 0.05, not 2 pi. This value you have to take it. 3000 by 1 minus 0 0.05. We are getting the 3895 watts. So, once you know the rotor input, the stator losses is given. The rotor input is equal to stator output because there is no power in wasting air gap. So, for this power, we add the stator losses, then we give the stator input. So, the stator input power equal to rotor input power plus stator copper loss, that is equal to 3895 plus B100, we are getting a 4,195 watts. In this manner, we are going to calculate the different values depending upon what are the things after in the numericals. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box of my YouTube channel so that I am always welcome to answer all your questions.